been made She's heaven's angel So strong Even in struggle Yeah When life comes like a storm From every angle She rises above it all Ooh, hey guys, what's happening? RC Blake's here. I am so excited to be able to share with you and uh, my prayers that something will be said that will help you in a very, very real way. Um, I'm doing this particular message because in our last time together, we discussed the game and how the game is played. And so I thought, and then based on some of the, the email uh, I got, some of the messages I got, I, I realized that I had to come back and finish this. I had to deal with how, how does a woman recover from the game? When a woman has uh, invested all of her life, you know, from a teenager on up into womanhood into believing that uh, these concepts of uh, love and relationship and value, you know, were all um, smoke screens and ends in her, um, her, her own broken consciousness and an emptied self-esteem. How does she recover from that? That has to be, and not only... Well, it, it, that is a very traumatic reality to come to terms with. And I've seen many days in, in my meetings when I, back in the days when we could actually have <laughs> physical meetings and I would do queenology, I would get to certain parts, certain parts of the teaching, and um, I would see women just begin to weep. I mean... I'm, I'm talking about dignified, uh, professional, well-educated women. I'm talking about women who may not have such great education, you know, maybe working a um, minimum wage job, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, uh, Indian, doesn't matter, you know, 60, 70, 18, 20, 25, it doesn't matter. They come to this reality where they wake up to the fact that all of this has been a game and it becomes a very traumatic wave that kind of takes over them, you know? And so I didn't want to just leave you there, you know, with this is the game. Okay. That is the game. But now, and if you haven't seen that video, go back and watch it back about it. I'll put a, whatever thing in the corner there so you can you can click on it and get to it. How does a woman recover from that when, when you've been gamed and you've been deceived and you've been hurt, um, you've been scammed, you've been bamboozled, run amok? How does a woman recover from that? Well, the first thing I will say to you, first thing I will say to you is that the reason it is so uh, painful and the reason it hurts so bad is it's not because you're weak. It's because of the time uh, you've spent on this. This is why you, you know, you, 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 you're torn between, should I let this go and move on with my life? And you know, you're, you're, you're back and forth. You're vacillating. <clears throat> it's because of the time spent. You've spent so much time on this so-called relationship that turns out to be a situationship. It's the hope that you had. You know, it's the time spent. You're feeling now like it, it was time wasted. And now it's the hope that you had. You, you had hopes that this was it, you know, finally in my search and finally I can get my life together and I can live my life to the full, like I desire to live it. Uh, and then it's the, the future plans that you had. You had so many plans for, for you and so-and-so. And now to, to come to the reality to finally wake up and realize that so-and-so was never really on the same page, but he was just really 
uh, in a transactional mode. He was in it for what he could get out of it, and he was just running game. It's very heavy, you know, and it's the reason that you're you're so frantic right now. It's the reason that you're so broken. It's it's not because you're weak. You're not weak. You were just blindsided. Did you catch that? Great, great place right there to just take a breath because that was a lot. It's not that you're, it's not that you're weak because see, that's what your mind is trying to tell you. That's what your ego is trying to tell you. Oh, you're weak. You're weak. You're weak. It's not that you were weak. You were blindsided. It, it was not what you thought it was and you were blindsided. So stop looking down on yourself. Let's start right there. Stop looking down on yourself for your own humanity. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop looking down on yourself for having been human. But let's jump in. Number one, how does a woman recover from the game? Number one, number one, trying to enunciate. My wife is working on me. I'm trying to get that that sovereign thing out of my, you know, trying to get that out so I can be understood. Number one, <clears throat> stop playing a losing game. Stop playing a losing game. See, because you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna have the 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 unction, the tendency, the uh, compulsion to like a gambler. You're gonna have this this idea. Okay, I got so much invested. I think I'll keep playing until I win. You can't win this game. You have to walk away from this table. The game is rigged. You have to stop playing a losing game. When you realize that you're losing, you got to stop playing. Now, if see, at some point, uh, you ladies are going to have to become your own community healthy community. And some of you that have lived a little bit are going to have to share with those who are just starting. Uh, some of you have lived long enough to realize that you keep going back and you keep playing this game thinking that somehow you're going to force yourself to win and you waste years, you waste decades. The sooner you wake up and you realize that this is game and the game is rigged against me, you got to stop playing. Listen to what the Bible says. Now, that's for those of you who are still sitting on the fence and you, you're like listening and you're biting your nails and, and then another part of you is saying, maybe I'll go back. I, I think uh, if I do this, I can, I, can, I can turn him in. I can change him. Uh, I can make him love me. If I give him more sex, I can make him love me. If, if I lose some weight, I can make him love me. You know, if I, if I get some, uh, what is it, plastic surgery and look younger, I can make... You, you can't. It's a losing game. You got to stop. Once you realize that you're in the middle of a rigged system, you have to stop playing the game. If, if you want to recover from the game, you can't recover from the game while still in the game. If you ever looked at a any, any professional sport, football, basketball, baseball, somebody gets hurt, they don't, they don't leave them on the field. They can't be helped until they are removed from the game. You have to remove yourself from the game. Listen to what the Bible says in Haggai 1, verses 6 and 7. It says, you have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe yourself, but there's none warm. And he that earneth wages earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Think about just, you know, for a minute, step outside of this experience of me talking to you and begin to think about what you've invested, what you've done, what have you gotten back for it? Consider your ways. It's futile to stay in a situation that has proven to you over and over and over and over again, you come up on the losing end. That's a lot of hard truth. You probably need to take a breath right there because that's kind of, that's like a gut punch, but it's, 
It's a necessary truth that you need to hear. You're not going to turn this around. This is not going to turn into a fairy tale. This was a nightmare from the beginning. So you separate yourself when and we start talking about stop playing a losing game. Practically, this means that you separate yourself from the source of your problem. I call it in one of my teachings, separating yourself from the source of, of your poisoning. And um, mental health professionals uh, would call this coming to a place where you intentionally go no contact, where you, you just put yourself in a position where you don't contact this person and you don't allow this person to contact you. You shut down, you, you, you lock all of the gates to the walls around your life. You lock all of the gates to this person so that there is no contact. Now, no contact is the start of no impact. If you want to get, if you sincerely want to get to the point where this person that has wrecked your life no longer has an impact on you, you have to make up your mind to embrace the tough choice to go no contact. No contact is the beginnings of no impact. You ultimately want to get to the place where this person no longer impacts you because you, the Bible says wisdom is too high for a fool. You want to rise to the next dimension above this person. So the isolation that I'm calling for, when you start talking about stop playing a losing game, it means to isolate yourself from this individual. The isolation is for the purpose of, or the purposes of psychological and emotional insulation. You have to pull yourself away from this person so that you can heal and, and that not only must you heal, but then you have to reinforce. You have to insulate your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions so that when you encounter this person again or people like this person, you are no longer the same gullible individual, but you've been transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, right now, this is the process of what? Renewing your mind. Though some of the things I'm saying to you may make you want to cut this thing off and not hear this. Uh, your mind is being renewed. And that means what? You're being insulated. But we can't insulate your soul until we get you separated. The Bible says it this way. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And I'll receive you. So the isolation is for the purposes of psychological and emotional insulation. It's where you can go back into a toxic culture as, as a healthy and whole queen conscious woman, and you cannot be impacted by this culture because your soul has been insulated. The problem is that most of you have been released into a toxic world with no insulation. Now, number two, you have to embrace the pain of withdrawal. So stop playing a losing game, which means I'm calling for you to make up your mind that you're going to shut this down. You're going to shut off contact. You're going to isolate yourself from this individual and you're not going to run and jump into some other relationship because you ain't ready for that yet. You need to isolate. You need to be in a posture of no contact. Number two, you have to embrace the pain of withdrawal. Now, what does that mean? It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. And there, there's, there's going to be a part of you that's going to long for this person as hard as that is for you to hear. And as crazy as that sounds to another part of your being, you know, it's true. There's a part of you that's going to long for your oppressor, your abuser. You, it, because it's going to be like coming off of drugs. I've never done it, but I've watched people do it. And it's a very painful process to allow that stuff to empty out of your system 
and the individual has to embrace the idea or the reality that I'm going to have withdrawals and that it's going to hurt for me to break this break out of this broken consciousness and to step into my queen consciousness that I am no longer a PhD woman manipulated by GED men, a queen being run by a clown. It's going to hurt as I shift levels, but pain, I've heard it said, is weakness leaving the body. That's what they say in the gym. I put it this way, pain is weakness leaving the soul. Sometimes the indication that your soul is healing and that you're growing and moving into a healthy place is the pain you feel. Um, another way I put it, which is my own, uh, I coined this, let your heart break and your soul will heal. Let your heart break and your soul will heal. There are some things in life you just have to accept it. The only way I can get to this level, the only way I can break out of this bondage is to embrace this pain. And listen to what the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8 through 10. He says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after, listen to the principle, after that you have suffered a while, he will make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. There's more in this process than pain. If you, if you embrace the pain of the withdrawal, you're not, only going to, you're not going to just get pain out of this. The pain is pregnant with tremendous possibilities. Now, now some of this pain is going to show up in, in, in ways like, or in things like this. You'll have a craving for the synthetic love. In other words, there will be a craving in you for that fake pseudo love that you accepted for so long that kept breaking you and kept diminishing you and kept emptying your self-esteem even more kept separating you from yourself it was all it was never real it was always a synthetic love and there will be a craving in you for that synthetic love and you will have to remind yourself this was and still is synthetic it's not real it's not real. It was always a dream. It was never reality. And then you're going to have you're going to also have feelings of shame and guilt. This these are going to be some of the some of the pains of of withdrawal, the craving for that synthetic love. You know, I want it. I want it because it's watch this. The reason you're going to crave that synthetic love is because it's all you've ever known to be love. And you're afraid if I let this go, there may not be anything other than this, which is where a lot of you are. You have become so cynical about life. You think that the stuff you've experienced is all there is. So you make statements like, um, all men are dogs. There's no such thing as, as uh, you know, this or that. And the reality is you got to allow yourself to go through the withdrawals to get that out of your system. And then you have to understand that you're going to have these feelings of shame and guilt. You're going to be shamed that um, you allowed a person that uh, is so. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, shallow, uh, depleted of character, depleted of uh, depleted of character, inferior you know, many times inferior intellectually and spiritually, you're going to be shamed that you allowed this person to get such a, a grip on you. But it really was never them. It was the it was the the fake dream that the system has set you up to pursue. 
and the system conditions you to fall prey to someone like this. So you're going to have feelings of, of guilt and shame. But let me say this to you. Let your pain be your proctor. And just take a breath right there. What is a proctor? It's really like an instructor, teacher. Let your pain be your teacher. Let your pain be your guide. Don't, don't, only, don't only take the hurt from the pain, but take the lessons. Because there are jewels. There are jewels in your pain and, and in your shame. And they're called lessons. They're called lessons. Listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs 1, 20 through 23. He says, wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city, she uttereth her words, saying, how long will ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Wisdom is always crying out. And quite often the megaphone of wisdom is your painful experience. If you stop for a minute and if you just embrace the pain and you look through the pain for the lessons, you discover that everything you need to learn is contained in the pain that you're experiencing. Most people ignore and miss the, miss the teacher in the pain because of the pain itself. You're so busy trying to get rid of the pain. Sometimes you got to feel it to heal it. You have to embrace it and go through it and look deeper and say, now God, what are you teaching me through this? What do I need to learn that I don't go through this again? This is how one woman can go through it and come out of it while another woman goes through it time and time and time and time and time and time again. She keeps feeling the pain, but she never learns the lessons. So you have to embrace the pain of withdrawal. Number three, you have to unlearn and relearn. The stuff that you've learned clearly ain't right. The stuff that you've learned clearly ain't right. Number three, you're going to have to unlearn and relearn. The things that you've been taught about um, what makes a woman attractive, you have to unlearn that stuff. And you have to ask yourself a question like, attractive to who? You know, attractive to who? You know, okay, I'll give you I'll give you a real one. You've been taught that a woman needs to go out in public just about half naked to the point that most of y'all are comfortable with that. You know, where your your skirt is just about showing all the cheeks of your and some of y'all do it actually. You know, all of this out and everything and nothing holding nothing together and you out in the street and they taught you they taught you wrong. They taught you that that's going to attract a man. That may attract a man. In fact, it will attract a man, attract a little, little, little man, child, little boy. It'll, it'll get you some sex, but that ain't attracting no husband. Ain't no husband looking for the woman that's out in the street uh, naked all the time, all over the Instagram naked all the time. You know, but you were taught that. And so that's the way you express your, you say you express your feminine energy, but it's really not your feminine energy as much as it is your broken consciousness you're expressing. And it shows that you've been indoctrinated by toxic male society. So you got to unlearn that stuff that, that I got to show my body to, to attract a man. Wrong, wrong. Wrong, wrong. You got to start living like a wife. If you if if you if you're ever gonna be a wife on paper, you got to be a wife in heart and in practice. You got to be a wife now, and that doesn't mean that you go around, you know, like a hermit. But you you know you, you got a little figure, show your figure, wear your stuff that you like, you know, feel good about yourself. But you're not supposed to be going overboard like the world has taught you. 
you know, got all your body parts out there. No, nothing left to the imagination. A real grown man wants something left to the imagination, and he certainly does not want his woman out there in the streets showing everybody what belongs to him. So there are things you got to unlearn. And, and see, some of you are pushing back right now. I can feel you're getting a little tense because I'm dealing with stuff that's knocking at your door and you're looking at your closet and you realize that 90% of this stuff you got in your closet need to go if this dude is telling the truth. And you may need to have you a big garage sale. In fact, you don't even need to have a garage sale. You just need to go and do something with that stuff. But the wisest point in a person's life is when they wake up to the realization I've been taught wrong. And because I've been taught wrong, I've been doing wrong. And I've been getting the wrong results. I've been getting results that are beneath me because I was taught wrong. I did wrong. I got wrong results. And now I have to come to this point, watch this, where I realize I know nothing. When you come to the point and you realize that you've been taught wrong and this stuff that you've been that's been poured into your head is wrong, you got to dump that stuff and you got to you got to realize I know nothing. When you come to the place where you're empty and you say you you approach the process and you say I know nothing, I need to relearn what womanhood is, what life is about, what a man is, what a relationship looks like. It's there. It's when you get to that point that wisdom comes. Now, now some of the stuff that you've got to unlearn is you got to, uh, let me see how I wrote it. You have, you must reject false metrics of value. You have to reject the world's false metrics, how you measure something of value, how the world values you or puts a value on you. And, and how is that basically done? Youth, size, sexuality, all of that stuff is temporal. Uh, all of that stuff is fleeting, is passing away. It lasts for a little while. What is, what is life about when I'm no longer a little teeny bopper? What is life about when I'm no longer two or three? And maybe a 13. What is life about when we've both gotten to a point where, you know, uh, you know, ain't nobody's yeah, ain't nobody really that focused on the sexuality no more. We just basically focused on taking care of one another and trying to build a future for our children and our grandchildren. These are false metrics where the world says if you're not a certain age, if you're not a certain size. Uh, if you're not sex, if you're not uh, if, if you're not leading with your sex appeal, if you're not showing me something showing if you're not if you're not revealing something to me. If I can't go to your Instagram, if I can't go to your Facebook and see a little something, these are false metrics. You have to begin to reject that your value is in more than your youth. Your value is in is, is never in your size. Your value is in your is, is never in your sexuality. There's a value in that when you when you're married, but but your sexuality as a woman should not be something that you lead with in 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 a world where you're single. Because once once you bring a man to the sexual level, and then you you want to back back and you want him to see you for your intellect and your spirit. It's nearly going to be impossible because when you stir a man up sexually, he doesn't see anything else but sex. And so now you want him to see that you I have a brain. I have a good heart. But you brought him to the sex out of turn. So you have to reject false metrics of value. You know, it's not your age, it's not your size, it's not, it's not how sexy you are. Um, you have to unlearn the programming to jump on command or at command. You know, like, like, like a circus animal or something. Jump! You know, dude, um, supposed to pick you up Friday, didn't even call. Here it is Sunday night at nine o'clock. He finally calls it. I'm going to swing through in a half hour. And, and now you tell me, I'm mad with you. How, how much time you say? Half hour. Now you jumping. You like that girl in Coming to America. She 
I mean, it goes just jumping and, you know, just, just like, a, like a circus animal or something like that. You got to unlearn that programming that you just jumping, you know, to, to, to the call of every little jive man that has made no commitments to you. you, you, you it's interesting how, watch this, when, 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 when a woman is in a toxic relationship, an abusive relationship, she jumps like that. And then she gets into a marriage with a good man and then she has a struggle with submission. To a man that's working for her, loving her, respecting her, taking care of her. I'm trying to get you to see how, you know, your mind has been poisoned. You was with this guy that was beating you up, dragging you across the floor, cheating on you, didn't care, cussed you out, didn't care what you think. You, you, you just, you just jump, jump, jump. You, 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 you jumped on command. Now you got a good guy, a decent man that's respectful and loves you, and you struggling with submission. You sitting around there with rocks in your jaws and all this kind of thing. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. I've got enough trouble right there. Therapists, when you start talking about unlearning the programming, therapists will help you to figure out uh, the roots to these strongholds. What makes you compliant? What, what makes you as a strong, independent woman? What makes you compliant to the abusive commands of a toxic man? Uh, let us see on the unlearning and relearning. Unlearn the self-deprecating language used to reinforce the chains on your brain. You're using what 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 the oppressor, what the oppressive, toxic man does is he introduces language into your soul that you pick up and you begin to regurgitate it, and not realizing that it's it's reinforcing your own bondage. And it's language, something that it goes something like this. I'm too fat or, or I'm too skinny. So you never have, you really have never have a, a body appreciation. You know, most women are struggling with the way their bodies look. Even women that are small are struggling. They, they think they're too small. Women that are heavier or think they're too heavy. Nobody's ever really content or satisfied with the package that the creators put you in. I'm too dark or I'm too light. You got black women bleaching. You got white women burning up uh, chemicals and all kinds of stuff. Skin cancer because toxic male culture has taught you that you got to stay off balance. You, you, you're never really good enough. I, I'm too educated. How many of you have backed out of your continued education, uh, your, your higher learning, because you didn't want to be more educated than the population of men in your geographical area, so you dumb yourself down? Or I'm not educated enough. Uh, here's, here's a good one. I'm not sexy enough. And what does that mean? I need to take off more. And then you take off more, then they say, well, you're too sexy. See, you, you got you got to stop. Number one, if a person doesn't treat you right, they're not going to teach you right. Why would you allow toxic male culture to be the proctor or the instructor in your life relative to your womanhood? If I don't treat you right, I'm not going to teach you right. I forget who said that, but it's not mine. You will never please, you got to unlearn now, and you got to relearn, you will never please toxic male culture. You'll never please because the oppressor will never empower the, the, the oppressed. The oppressor will never empower the oppressed. You, you can jump through every hoop you can imagine. You can try to check off every list. And by the time you think you got it all done, they're going to create a new list because they want to keep you what hopping. You got to unlearn. And then number four. Uh, let me see how much more I got here. Good God Almighty. OK, let me hurry up here. Number four, you have to have a formal introduction to yourself. Most of you have not have never met yourselves. You have no real concept of who you are. Now, when we start talking about having a formal introduction to yourself, 
This happens in a period where you intentionally dedicate your life to you for a season. And you learn to know and love yourself. How many of you watching me right now have never had a season where you dedicated that season to you and self-discovery? Because having a formal introduction to yourself is about, watch this, self-discovery, self-definition, and self-development. It does not involve anyone else. Everybody needs a season in life where you have nobody in your life and your focus is on you. Self-discovery, self-definition, and self-development. And see, having a formal introduction to yourself, getting to know you, what you like, what you want, what you don't want, what you don't like, you know what I mean? What makes you happy as an individual, um, that creates a health in you. And until you you can look at the world through healthy eyes. You will always ascribe, listen to this very carefully. This is why number four is important. Important, having a formal introduction to yourself, getting to know you as an individual. Because until you can look at the world through healthy eyes, you will always ascribe value to trash. And you will lack discernment of assets. It's, it's not until you get, see, you know who they are and you know what they want and what they said, but who are you? What do you really want? What do you really have to say about this? And there are a few things that I jotted down relative to developing uh, what I call a relationship with yourself. Number one, learn and scrutinize your history. You, you, you learn a lot about yourself when you begin to really look at your history and what you've gone through. It will teach you a lot about why you think the way you think and why you um, react the way you react, why you accept the things you accept. You can really do a lot of self therapy if you just, if you just really look over and scrutinize your history. Uh, second thing is that you got to embrace, you need to embrace the ordained seasons of, of self selfishness. All of this is under number four, where we're talking about having a formal introduction to yourself. You got to have this season of selfishness where it's all about you, you know, and this is where you what discover who you are. This is about self-discovery and self-development. This is not a narcissistic trip. This is about self-discovery and self-development. I can't really appreciate you until I really know who I am. And then, then I put under there, you got to ask the questions that reveal your core. There are questions that you need to ask yourself. Um, what lingering hurts have I allowed to define me? Write that down and think about that tonight. What lingering hurts have I allowed to define me? What are my weaknesses and what are my shame? What is my shame? What are my guilts? Because those things are what? poisoning you and preventing you from being functional. And then ultimately you need to ask yourself the question, who am I? Why do I exist? What do I want? What makes me happy? What is my, what is my um, contribution to the world? See, when you start thinking like this, you realize that all of this energy you've been putting into all of these fake relationships has been a waste of time. On, on things that are not priority. Priority is that you find and discover you. The reason you keep choosing wrong is because you don't know who you are. And when you don't know who you are, you accept anything that comes because you have no boundaries. And then number uh, five, I guess this is, is this five? Uh, so much here, y'all. Then number five, um, you got to learn to appreciate actual value and I'm done. You have to learn to appreciate actual value. And all of this is how does a woman recover from the game? Stop playing 
Stop playing a losing game, number one. You realize that, that you're losing, stop playing. You got to know when to fold them, know when to hold them. Number two, embrace the pain of withdrawal. It's going to hurt you to change the level of your consciousness. Embrace it. The pain does not last. It's temporary. Number three, you have to unlearn and you have to relearn. You got to unlearn the old conditioning that continues to put you in a position of um, a woman that's female slave conditioned. Number four, you need a formal introduction to yourself. The kind of energy that you've put into meeting and knowing other people is the kind of energy you need to give to actually knowing yourself and your purpose and finding um, finding out why the creator made you and put you here on the planet and then do that. Marry your purpose. Marry your purpose. Marry your purpose. But you can't do that until you have a formal introduction to yourself. And then number five, you have to learn to appreciate actual value. Now, that's a big one for me because I think I'm getting ready to, to start digging a little more into what you're attracted to as a woman and why are you attracted to it? You have to learn to appreciate actual value. See, many of you, I wish I had it in here, are like, um, okay, many of you, you know, anything that glitters, you, 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 oh, oh, so I can come in with a big old piece of glass, literally, big old piece of glass and, and flash it. Oh, look at the diamond. Oh, look at the diamond. But you see a jeweler who's at a different level of consciousness and intentionally looks deeper because the jeweler understands that you can't determine value by the flash. You have to look deep into a thing to determine value. So everybody that's teaching you that your value is on the surface. Uh -uh. You go to a jeweler and you bring a, a so-called diamond. He's going to pull out a thing called a loop. And he's going to look deep into that stone. He's going to be looking for um, carbon and all kind of stuff, the clarity. Whereas you just excited about the way it's shining. Ooh, look what I got. The jeweler is going to look deep because the jeweler has an appreciation for actual value. See, I say to you, there's, there's a difference between uh, value and profile. And the sad reality is that you've continued to get caught up in the game because you've always been attracted to profile. As I said the other night, just because a man pulls up in a Ferrari doesn't mean he can afford it. Or a Lamborghini, I think I said. You got to stop being impressed by this surface level stuff and you got you to gotta get a loop and you got to begin to look deeper. You got to begin to look deeper. Learn to appreciate actual value and stop being so excited about profile. It's kind of like this illustration I use all the time. A person takes a um, million dollars and puts it in a um, fast food bag with grease, grease stains and throws it on the side of the road Puts a, puts a brick in it so it won't blow away, more than likely they come back three, four days later, it's still there. A person takes a box of trash, a bag of trash, pours it in a box, wraps the box with beautiful paper, put a big bow on it, makes a nice profile, put it on the side of the road, come back 15 minutes later, it's gone. Because most of us are conditioned to believe that value is on the surface and the way it looks is the way it is. It ain't so. Value is deep. That's why some of you have missed great men because you're looking at what's shining and glittering when you should have been looking deeper for real value. Now we can talk more about that, but it's your responsibility to learn to appreciate actual value. So a few things I want you to remember as I go. You are enough as you are. Write these down somewhere. 
You are enough as you are. Number two, you do not need to perform. Write these down and these should probably be come some of your daily affirmations. I am enough as I am. I do not need to perform for anybody. Number three, the only pressure I should feel is the pressure of competing with the best version of myself. All of us should be getting better and changing, but you shouldn't be changing for me. I shouldn't be changing for you. I should be changing for the reality in my own soul of the best version of R.C. Blakes Jr. You should be in competition with your own inner view perspective of the best version of you. Number four, you must pause and rethink you. Because a lot of what you've been conditioned to believe is actually you, is not. It's what the world has forced upon you and you've just been like a robot. So you have to pause, pa I must pause and rethink me. Who am I? What do I want? What makes me happy? What fulfills me? And then number five, I must be intentional about not being angry. Because when you've gone through this and you've been hurt, you've been broken, you become, you become what looks like an angry person, but it's really pain expressing itself. And you want to make certain that you control that because you don't want to project anger onto the world because God is bringing you into new circles with healthier people that are going to treat you differently and you can't make them pay for what another man did. And so I hope that you've gotten something out of this. This is my response to many of you who emailed me and said, well, pastor, how do I overcome? How does a woman recover from the game? Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for the power of the Holy Spirit I thank you for this time that I've had with uh, these queens and even some kings, dear God. Thank you, Father, that you are supernaturally bringing healing to our hearts. Every place that is broken, you're mending. And I thank you now, God, for doing a new thing in them. I thank you for the testimonials that something shifted in my life. The Holy Spirit did a new thing in me. I thank you, God, for bringing healing and restoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, I need you to do a few things. If this is your first time here, I need you to subscribe. I need you to go to my website and sign up for my, um, for my mailing list. I need you to be on that. Uh, don't forget that we are doing Queenology 2.0, the second half. We just did Queenology 2.0 some weeks ago, but we're doing the second part in December. And I call, I'm calling it the second part because when it's all put together, all of the content from both of these conferences is going to make up the next book, The Training for Reigning. So it'll be It'll be like, it's like a trilogy. The father-daughter talk started it. Queenology was the second message. And then the training for reigning is going to be the third message. And so this conference, this cyber conference in December is going to be the second half of that content. And I want you to be there. There are links in the description. Again, I say to you, I'm no counselor or therapist. Those of you that need a counselor, need a therapist, there's a link in the description for better help. You can go there. We've partnered with them. I recommend them to you. Somebody professional that can really listen to you. You do it over the phone, do it over the internet. An amazing opportunity. And just know that Lisa and I love you. All of you that support us and just, we thank you for, what is it? Super chats and just however y'all be sending money. That, that always trips me out. We thank you for that. We, 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 we really appreciate you. We love you with all of our hearts. I, we just, we couldn't do it without you. And I just want you to know that I love you and I had to bring this message to you and I pray that it has helped you. Please share it, please share it. Uh, get my thumb, get my likes up now. Make certain that my likes up. This helps me to, uh, this helps us to, you know, it works with the algorithm and we wanna make certain that we reach as many people as possible. Until next time, I'm R.C. Blakes Jr. Know that I love you, know that I love you, know that I'm praying for you. It's gonna be all right. 
God bless you. I love you. She's heaven's angel. So strong. Even in struggle. Yeah. When life comes like a storm. From every angle. She rises above it all. Backbone of every home. Nothing compares.